بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم we praise Allah subhanahu wa taala we glorify him and we beg Allah subhanahu wa taala for his mercy and his forgiveness we beg Allah subhanahu wa taala for his protection and his guidance we beg Allah subhanahu wa taala to accept us and to count us all amongst the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are in difficulties to grant them ease, those who are sick to grant them shifa. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all those who have returned to him from this ummah to have mercy upon them, to forgive them and to reunite them with all of us in Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen. My dear gathering, two days ago, we exited the month of Ramadan, the month of forgiveness, the month of Quran, the month of discipline, the month of mercy, the month of togetherness and community. Ramadan has departed. And so will each and every one of us depart this life and will encounter what we have achieved and what we have put forth, not only in Ramadan, but throughout the length and breadth of our lives. Ramadan has departed, and hopefully it left us in a position of strength where we are fully charged and our Iman is at a high and our hearts are clean and softer and pure and our character is refined and our relationship with each other is stronger and we are in a position to withstand the temptations of shaitan for the rest of the year. My dear gathering, immediately after Ramadan, we are faced with challenges. In fact, many of these challenges kicked in on the day of Eid itself. And today, I want to look at four of these challenges that starts immediately on the morning of Eid. And more importantly, some recommendation of how we can overcome these challenges and go through the rest of the year, inshallah, strong and in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first and foremost challenge we face immediately after Eid or on the day of Eid itself is the challenge to stay connected with our Salah. In Ramadan, we had the support of our community and we wake up for suhoor to keep the fast and we pray. 
and we perform Maghrib and have iftar together. And the community is there and the family is there and we have all the support. But immediately after Eid, laziness kicks in and we start to lack and neglect our salah. Even though the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, أَوَّلُ مَا يُحَاسَبُ عَلَيْهِ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ الصَّلَىٰ The first thing you will be questioned about on the Day of Judgment is not your fasting or anything else. It's about your salah. And if your salah is intact, then all your deeds will be intact. But if your salah is not intact and you have neglected your salah, then all your deeds will be wasted as well. And that is why more than 70 places in Al-Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us about our salah and to establish salah. Whereas once in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about fasting. Once in Quran, Allah told us about fasting. But throughout the Quran, Allah is reminding us about our salah. Because why? Our salah is a pillar. And a pillar, if you move it, the building, the structure will crumble. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just say to pray. He says, Keep telling us, establish it, make it a pillar. Everything else can move. But that pillar, if it moves, you will crumble. Your show, your work, your outing, your entertainment, everything can move. But if your salah moves, then you will perish. And that is why the people of Jahannam, when they are asked, what is it that caused you to be in the fire? The first answer they will give is, They say, we were not among those who performed the salah. And if you are not among those who perform salah, what happens? All your actions as well will not be in conformity with those who perform salah. Luqman alayhi salam, when he advised his son in Al-Quran, after telling his son, do not commit shirk, be good to your parents, he commanded him. He was training his son how to be a good leader, how to be strong. He said, aqim is salah. He says, establish salah. Make that the seed, the pillar in your life. And if you make that strong, then the fruits will be what more bil ma'roof one hand in murka was bil alama asobak. Then it will lead you to what? Stay away from what is wrong. It will help you to do what is right. And you will inculcate that quality of patience in your life. But without salah, you don't have that. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, sabri was salah. Seek help with patience and salah. It goes together. Without salah, you won't have patience because Salah teaches you to have that hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have that discipline, to know that Allah is in control and you are his slave, you are his servant, and he helps you to have that patience and accept the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a challenge we all face in making sure that we establish our Salah regularly around time. So what do we do? for the rest of the year. If you are one who only pray on the day of Juma, Alhamdulillah, you are here. And Allah loves you, that's why you are here. And you have good in you, that's why you are here. But, start with a salah once a week, other than Juma. Even if it's once a week, but make it a habit, make it a schedule, and be consistent. And when it becomes a habit, then add two salah a week. And slowly you will find, and you will fall in love and see the benefit of your salah, and then you will start to get five daily salah will become easy for you, because you will develop that habit, that discipline. But start with once a week. 
And if you are already praying once a week, then add a salah to that. And if you are praying your five daily salah, and you are only performing your fire, then add your sunnah and nawafil. Slowly add and build upon it, and be in an environment and be friends with people who perform salah and encourage you. But we have to start. That's the only way you will overcome this. That you have to start and make incremental changes on a daily basis. The second challenge we face immediately after Eid is the challenge to stay connected to Ramadan. To the source of Ramadan. The book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, Shah Ramadan al-Azi unzila fi al-Qur'an, is to stay connected to the Qur'an. In Ramadan, alhamdulillah, we listen to the Qur'an, we recite the Qur'an, we talk about the Qur'an, we hear so much about the Qur'an, because it's the month of Qur'an. But immediately after Eid, we pull that plug. And if you pull that plug, you are pulling the plug from the source of your power and energy. Because Ramadan was meant to reintroduce us to the Book of Allah. Ramadan was meant to reconnect us to the Book of Allah. Ramadan was meant for us to find new light and guidance in the Book of Allah. Ramadan was meant for us to go dive into the Quran and find ourselves where we stand. And when we, you reconnect with the Book of Allah, then the Quran, what? It becomes that shifa, that cure for your sickness. It becomes hudan nas. It becomes that guidance in your life. It becomes that light that takes you out of darkness. It becomes useful to you. You see the benefit of the Quran. But when we pull that plug from our source of power and energy, then darkness. Darkness re-enter your life. You don't have that energy anymore. It means you really did not understand the purpose of Ramadan. You just went through Ramadan without understanding that Ramadan is about the Book of Allah and it has to make you reconnect and be, build that strong connection. So how do we go through this challenge in life for the rest of the year? Make sure that the Quran becomes our daily dose. That every single day, and if you are someone who never goes to the Book of Allah, then make a schedule and be disciplined about it and stick to it that at least once a week, on this particular day, on this particular night, I will open the Book of Allah and stick with that. And you spend five minutes with the Book of Allah a week, and slowly you will develop and you will find that enjoyment, that love, that sweetness in the book of Allah, that slowly you will start to add to that five minutes and you will make it a daily habit. And when you make the Quran a daily habit, then it will bring that contentment in your life. It will give you that strength and that power to go through your day and your week and your months and your year until Ramadan comes again and you charge again. Even if you commit a sin, during that day, still go to the Book of Allah because that way you will find your answer, you will find solution. But we need to make sure we go to the Quran regularly if we are to overcome this challenge. Because what is the Quran? It's something it means, something that has been recited over and over again. So we go to it, we go look for solution, for answer, and every time you go to the Book of Allah, if you go once a week, the first thing you should say, Oh Allah, I thank you. You know why? Because you love me so much that you have chosen to speak to me. That is what when we open the book of Allah, Allah is talking to us. And that is why when we open the book of Allah, we should feel fortunate that Allah has chosen me and he's speaking to me directly. And he's telling me how to live my life and what to do and what not to do so I can be a better person so I can earn Jannah so every time we should go to the Quran with this mentality with an open mind that Allah is talking to me and when he tells me to do something even if I don't like it I say to myself 
My Rob loves me. He knows what is best for me. He knows what is best for me. But we need to make sure every one of us, male and female, understand that the Quran is within our reach. Because some people have that mentality that I have committed sin, I have made mistakes, and I am not holy enough to go to the Book of Allah. We all make mistakes, and the Quran is there for every one of us. So we need to make sure we stay plugged in regularly. That's the only way we will stay charged and we will have that light in our lives. Otherwise, if you unplug, then that darkness will return to you. And the third challenge we face after Ramadan is to stay attached with our families. Alhamdulillah, in Ramadan, our hearts were softer and we smile more. And we engage with our families in iftar and we go for salah together. And we overlook each other's faults. And we have that enjoyment and that happiness in the home. But immediately after Ramadan, shaitan returns. And the family crisis raises its heads again. And husband and wife cannot tolerate each other, each other anymore after Ramadan. You start to annoy each other. And brothers and sisters who are breaking bread and having iftar together stop talking to each other. And children and parents issue starts again. Why? Because shaitan number one goal is to break the family. So we will find that challenge after Ramadan. But how do we overcome it? We have to understand that we cannot accept that status quo. We cannot accept it is what it is. No, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, protect yourself and your families, which means you have to do something. We can't accept that it will be like that. We have to work. We have to work on ourselves and our family and make an effort. Because when Allah says, He says, do something, take an action. So we have to take action. And we never give up on our family. We never give up on our family, no matter what mistake they make. We still work with them and we have hope that they will change and we will be better and they will be better. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who chose our family for us. Our rahim, our family, we did not choose who is our children and who is our brothers and sisters and our parents. Allah chose them for us. Allah made that person your aunt or your uncle or your brother or sister. Allah is the one who chose them for you. So we don't give up on them. But we keep encouraging them and work with them. And we learn to forgive and to forget. And there are a few simple things we can do to strengthen our family for the rest of the years. They are very simple things, but they are very difficult. And the first and foremost is that we show appreciation to our family member. Husband and wife, you show appreciation to each other. You praise each other. You appreciate each other. We show appreciation to our parents and our children. And we engage our family in our social life. That you smile more. You visit each other more. You give gift to each other. Not only on the day of Eid. You want to strengthen your bond with someone. Tahadu, tahabu. Bring them gift. Visit them, call them on the phone, stay connected with them. And you should know that your family, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Al-Quran about the people who will enter Jannah. Jannah to Adnin Yad Khulunaha, Waman Salaha min Abaim was Wajim was Uriatim, while Malaika to Yad Khuluna Alehim in Kuliba, Salamun Alekum in Masabartum. Allah says, when you work with your family and your family is strong and you worship Allah together, you will enter Jannah. You and all those who came before you and your family line and all, all those who will come after, meaning your parents and your grandparents and your great grands and your children and your great grandchildren and your great grand, you will all enter Jannah together. And you will have that family reunion 
and the malaika, the angels will come and say, Salamun alaikum, in Jannah. That's the incentive we have to work with our family. That we don't give up on them. That we show appreciation. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, khayrukum khayrukum li ahlihi. The best among you, isn't it? Not the one who fasts the most, or pray the most, or make the most hajj and umrah. Is the one who is best to his family. Because that's truly who you are. That's your true character. The way you behave in your home with the ones who you eat and sleep with. So let us make sure we don't give up on our family, but we do something about it. We work. We work hard with our family so that we can all enter Jannah together, inshallah. And then the fourth challenge we face after Eid. And all these challenges, they are connected. You overcome one, the other one becomes easier. All of them become easier once you are able to overcome one of it. And the fourth challenge we face is to stay in the right circle, with the right company, with the right friends, in the right environment. Because in Ramadan, we were praying together. And you are in that circle of people who does the same thing, who encourage you. Who encourage you to please Allah, to worship Allah, so it was easy for us. But after Eid, if we go back to our old companies, then you will be the way your company are. Because the ones you keep as company, the friends you keep, is a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of who you are. That is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Al-mar'u ala deeni khalilihi fal yanzur ahadukum man yukhalil. A man is on the deen, is on the religion, is on the way of his company, his friends. So he says, be careful who you choose as your friends and your associate and your company because that is who you are. So if you keep com com good company, it's a reflection of who you are. Alhamdulillah in Ramadan, we had good company. It's a reflection of the way we behave in Ramadan. But if we change that after Ramadan, then we return into our old ways. That is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us a good company and a bad company is like one who sells perfume and a blacksmith. The one who sells perfume, you enter his store, you enjoy the beautiful smell, fragrance. He may give you something, you may buy something from him, or at least you will leave that store and you will be smelling good. It's a win-win, you never lose. But a blacksmith, his fire will either burn you or dirty your clothes or you will inhale the fume. It's a lose-lose-lose situation. Who do we choose as our company? The one that can remind us of, of Allah. The one that can show us our faults and remind us and tell us when we make mistakes. Those are the ones who actually love us. It's not the one who covers our faults. Our brothers and sisters who come to us and say, Brother, sister, you made a mistake. And help us, they care for us. They love us. They want to show us and make sure we are on the right path. Because none of us, no matter who we are or what we are or how independent we think we are, you cannot be an island. You cannot go through life by yourself. You need associates, you need friends, you need people around you. And if you don't have righteous associates and friends who can lift you and remind you of Allah and lead you to Jannah, then you will have the not-so-righteous one who will take you down the drain with them. So let us make sure we are in the right circle, we have the right company, those who can help us to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can earn Jannatul Firdaus together. أقول كولي هذا وأستغفر الله ولكم وليس المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم. Brothers, there's a lot of room. Please come forward. There are a lot of brothers standing outside. Please come forward so that they can come in.
Those who are standing outside, please come in. There's a lot of room. You will find space once you come in. There's a lot of room to my right and left. Just don't sit by the door and block the entrance. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, wahda. Wa salatu wa salam ala man la nabiya ba'da. Allahumma salli wa salim wa barik ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi yajma'in. My dear gathering, if by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ramadan has lifted us up and make us better and brought us closer to Allah and make us stronger and more disciplined, and let us don't go into recession after Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to make dua to Allah. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from recession after advancement. So after we have advanced in Ramadan, let us beg Allah that we don't go back into recession and we don't slip and slide. Because Ramadan has proven, and you have proven, that you are capable of being disciplined. You have proven that you are capable of being strong and making sacrifice and doing the right thing. Don't give up after Ramadan. Because an accept, sign of acceptance of good deeds is continuous good deeds. If you want a sign that your Ramadan was successful, if you want a sign that you have benefited from Ramadan, then look at your behavior and the way you conduct your life after Ramadan. If you find that after Ramadan, I am stronger and more connected to my salah. If you find after Ramadan, I continue to be connected to the book of Allah. I continue to be good to fa my family. <coughs> I still have good friends and I'm still in the right environment then that's a great sign that you had a successful Ramadan because Ramadan has transformed you. And that's the purpose of Ramadan, to transform us, to make us better. Not only in Ramadan, for the rest of the year, Allah has blessed you with Ramadan and Ramadan has transformed you. So that's a sign. Because Ramadan is that annual battery charger. And we need to make sure that that charge that we have now, that we are fully charged, we continue to use that charge to light our lives for the rest of the year. That Ramadan has cleansed us. And hopefully we pray that Allah accept all our dua in Ramadan and forgive us. But now we are clean after Ramadan. That Allah has accepted us. Let us don't dive into the filth after Ramadan. Because if you are in that pit of filth, you cannot be cleansed. If you are in the wrong company and the wrong environment, and you are in filth, we can pour all the water on you, you still will not be clean, because you are in the filth. But once you come out of that environment, and you come out of that filth, and you are in the right environment and the right company, then one shower will cleanse you because you are in the right place. So Ramadan came and it cleansed us. And we begged Allah to accept from us. Let us don't go back into filth after Ramadan. And, and that is why we did not say farewell to Ramadan. Because Ramadan will come again. Some of us may be here, some of us may not be here. But we said farewell to what? Our bad habits. To haram place, haram food, haram company, we say farewell to that. Laziness, we said farewell to. Because why? Ramadan has taught us that. That's the purpose of Ramadan. For us to say farewell to evil and for us to welcome the good things in our lives. And if we are sad, and we are all sad that Ramadan is over for this year, and we look forward for it for the next year and many more years. But if we are really sad, 
to overcome that sadness, what do we do? We take Ramadan with us for the rest of the year. You take Ramadan to your business. You take Ramadan to your workplace. You take Ramadan to the store. You take Ramadan in your car. You take Ramadan when you deal with your friends and your neighbors and your family. We take the teachings and the discipline of Ramadan with us for the rest of the year. That's the only way Ramadan will stay alive with us. And it is our duty to keep Ramadan alive with us for the rest of the year. To stay connected and plugged in to Ramadan. So that when the next Ramadan comes, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spare our lives, we will be in a position now that our next Ramadan will be better because now we are stronger and we enter another Ramadan willing to recharge and prepare for the next year. Inshallah, I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to make us among those who establish our salah and time. People who are in love with the Quran and go to the Quran constantly. We pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our families and to keep us all in the right circle with the right friends, with the right associate, and to help us all so that we can all enter Jannatul Firdaus together with our families, with our Abba, with our parents and grandparents, and our Zuri, and our brothers and sisters, and our wives and our spouses, we can all enter Jannah together. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our Iman. And I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are in difficulties to grant them ease. And those who are facing challenges in their life, to help them to overcome those challenges. And we pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our brothers and sisters all over the world that are suffering, that be, they are being oppressed. We pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them for the difficulties they are going through. And to reward them with Jannatul Firdaus. Ibadallah, ittaqullah, inna Allah ya'maru bil ad wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha'ni al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-bakh ya'idukum la'allakum tadakkarun aqimis salat.